time on Paint by Monster, you'll need acrylic paints, paint brushes, specifically the little liner brushes, not those great big things, a pencil, also some water, some paper towel or toilet paper wouldn't be a bad idea, a place to mix the paints, and some rocks. Rock painting, this time on Paint by Monster. Hello everyone and welcome to Paint by Monster with me, your host, Easel Monster. People have been painting on the surface of rocks since before the last ice age, around 12,000 years ago. Take a look at this. This is one of my very favorite cave paintings of all time. This horse is painted on a cave wall in Lascaux, France. Look at how beautiful this thing is. Art historians will generally tell you that you really need to understand when and where and who made the art if you want to understand it. Some people will say, can't I just look at the art and appreciate it without knowing when it was made or anything about it? Can't I just experience it? Well, sure, but the problem with that is that You'll treat all art like it was made yesterday by people just like yourself, and you'll bring your own presuppositions to the work. And no matter how sincere you are or how genuinely you appreciate the art, if you don't have some idea of when it was made, who made it, and who it was made for, then your judgments will be confused and faulty because you are only looking at the art through the lens of yourself. And you have got to get bigger than that. Remember, art is the memory of the society. Artists come from a specific time and a specific place. And speaking of specific place, there is a project that started in Cape Cod, Massachusetts by a woman named Megan Murphy that has spread across the country. It's called the Kindness Rocks Project. And I'll put a link to their website in the description. Basically, People paint little inspirational things on rocks and leave them laying around for other people to find and be inspired by. And that's nice. Plus, it's kind of fun to do. Plus, it's an art project that you can do while you're sitting around with other people, and that is really great. So, let's get started. Rock painting is a lot like decorating Easter eggs that came out of a chicken that you don't want to mess with. Now... I am not going to start out by putting an inspirational phrase on this rock. I'm going to start out with a couple of cartoon sound effects, because I love cartoon sound effects, and so do you. If you've collected your rocks from outdoors somewhere, it's a good idea to clean them really well with a mild detergent and someone else's toothbrush. And if you've gathered rocks with a lot of little holes or pits in them where bugs or mites or things like that might have laid their eggs, it's not a bad idea to soak your rocks in bleach water for a few minutes. Remember, bleach kills stuff. That's why we treat water with it. It kills bacteria dead. So, don't get it on your skin, and especially don't get it near your eyes. What will you paint on your rock? That's always the question, isn't it? Well, words, pictures, or designs. Those are basically your three options. Here, I've started with a bang because, like Bugs Bunny says, I want my program to go over with a bang. I did that because I want my program to go over with a bang. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one of the things that you see people do sometimes when they paint rocks is to spray paint the rocks before they paint here. I am putting down a primer coat of white paint just in the areas that I want to paint on and leaving the rest of the rock au naturel. But you don't have to do that. You could spray paint the entire rock and you could also use paint markers to write things on your rocks instead of using paintbrushes. That might be a little easier, especially for young children. And if it's a really smooth rock, you could also use Sharpie markers. But... Not me, man. I'm using paint. This is paint by monster. Pow! Paint by monster. Now, let me get in here and put some chicken pox on this splash balloon. That's the technical term for what that shape is back there. That is a splash balloon. All right. There we go. 
Now, I like to put a black outline around stuff because I just like the graphic look of a black outline around some stuff. There it is. Pow! All right, here's one of the rocks that I picked up down by the railroad tracks down by where I live. In Muncie, there's a lot of trains that go through Muncie. Right downtown, they go through. Here is Zango. What is Zango? It's one of the magic words. Like abracadabra. The lesser known, but equally as powerful and potent. Zango. One of the reasons why a brush is a good idea if you're going to paint on this kind of rock is paint markers are just not really up to the task of painting on a rock with a significant and severe irregular surface. And a paintbrush, you can just do it. Put little dots around. I like to like dots. Just like the, the shields on Star Trek. Sir, our shields are dropping. We'll put some black around here because make it look like confetti. It's a party. The Zango party. There it is. All right. I thought I should at least do a couple of inspirational rocks or instructional rocks. So here is Cullion. And that's a base and vile person. It comes from a, a Latin root word meaning a part of the male anatomy. Uh, see the link in the description to find out which part. And here is Lickspittle which is a person who will do anything to get other people to like them. Boys and girls, don't ever be a cullion and don't ever be a lickspittle. It will not work out for you. Ever. You know what I think I'm going to do is put on a sweater and I'm going to put bongos on my head and I'm going to get a grocery sack and I'm going to the grocery. I think I put on a sweater, put bongos on my head, and go to the grocery too. Let me get my grocery sack. Let me get my hat. L let me get my hat. Let's go. To everything turn. All right, this is called a mandala. In Sanskrit, it means circle. Uh, in Buddhism, they make these things and then they pray over them. It's a symbol that represents the universe. And always after they get done making these things, they, they pray over them, then they destroy them. It's kind of weird to paint one of these on a rock. It's kind of hard to destroy a rock, but that's all right. Basically, you just, you're making circles and you're filling in the spots in between the dots. I'm using a Q-tip here because, well, I want to show you that you can use a Q-tip. You don't have to use a brush. You got a Q-tip, that's fine. Just keep going around and filling in the dots. All right, here's another uh, inspirational one. We'll make this is familiar to everybody, I'm sure. This is Love Thy Neighbor. It's particularly appropriate to say this in Muncie. And once this dries, you can take an X-Acto knife and scratch this off. Love thy neighbor. But call the Muncie police, 747-4838. If they're too loud, call the cops. All right, this is fun right here. I saw this on Pinterest. So this is something that somebody else has done. In fact, they had a tutorial on Pinterest on how to do this. Guess what these things are? They're sharks. Isn't that cute? You can make a whole display on your desk. You know, that's not right. That rock doesn't go there. Anyway, here they all are. Come springtime, maybe I'll go walk around downtown here where I live and put these out. If you're in Muncie and you see one of these... Take a picture with it and send it to me on Facebook or on Pinterest or Instagram or on Twitter. I check all that stuff. Someday I might even be good at them too. Maybe when I get that intern who works for Hot Pockets. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this visit as much as I have. Painting rocks is a load of fun and it's cheap and you might just brighten someone's whole day. Also, we talked a little about art history and how important it is to really learn something about the art you're looking at, which reminds me, here is a little song to encourage some of you. Sometimes you're stupid, cause you don't know what some things are and how they go. The stuff you don't know keeps you small, so learn all you can and grow. Less stupid.
grow less stupid. You can get less stupid every day. You know how? By learning something. Isn't that encouraging? Hey, I'd also like to take a moment to welcome all of the over 100 new subscribers so far here in 2018. Thank you for watching and for subscribing. Also, to those of you who are supporting me on Patreon, thank you. Well, I'll be back real soon with another video, but in the meantime, you know what to go do with yourself, right? Go make some art. Make a drawing or a painting. Go make something entertaining. Make some art. Go make some art. Go get your pencils, paints, and papers, plaster, chisels, markers, scrapers, rulers, canvas, brushes, hammers, nails, and tape, guitars, and super glue. Get glue and macaroni, cameras, frames, and fried bologna. Go get anything you need for making art. That gnawing feeling deep inside that you can do it isn't lying to you. Get up off your butt and make some art. Paint by Monster is made by one monster sitting in a tiny upstairs bedroom studio smack downtown in Muncie, Indiana. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Go make some art. And see you next time.